Hi everybody, welcome to the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources Fish Pond at the Minnesota State Fair. We're really excited to be here. It's uh, actually the day before the fair, but we want to give you a little information for those of you that can't actually be here in person today and check out the fish and learn a little bit more about the fish we have out here. So we'll be going through some of the different species and giving you some feedback on that. Uh, my name is Jeff Letterman. I'm with the, d the section of Fish and Wildlife within the Department of Natural Resources. I supervise our education and skills team. I'm with... I'm Benji Cohen. I'm also with Fisheries in wildlife and I, I work with the mentor network coordinator so we are a couple of the folks that'll be doing pond talks during the state fair run but uh, we want I want to start out with a joke uh, we're both dads right so it's okay if I do a dad joke of course <laughs> we uh, did you know that fish are smarter than humans fish are smarter than humans no way yes have you ever seen any fish at the local outdoor retail store spending thousands of dollars to try and trick a human no, I haven't. Thanks for that. Thanks for that laugh. Uh, <laughs> I bring that up because it's uh, really important. The purchases that people make of hunting and hunting and fishing equipment is um, really uh, contributes a lot to our um, resources at the state and the federal government excise tax on that equipment. So a small amount of that tax comes back to every state to help us pay for our fish and wildlife um, programming uh, like this and what we do for research, what we do for habitat management. Uh, about 75% of our funding actually in fish and wildlife comes from that money. Uh, the other 25% or so comes from license sales. So please continue to get out there and buy those licenses. It's really important to our programming and be able to continue to support our efforts at the DNR. Well, let's start out. Everybody wants to know about the fish in the pond. Benji, where, where are these fish coming from? They're not here all year round, of course. No, we keep them in a super secret location, a pond, at least the larger fish. The smaller fish are captured this past week in both the Minnesota River and the Mississippi River, and we bring them here to the state fair. And I think the kind of important thing is after the fair, we take them to a pond to overwinter, so a lot of our fish have been here for years and years, especially the bigger ones, but we never release the fish back into a river because just like your boats and just like your fishing equipment, we don't want to spread any invasive species or disease. So once they're here at the fair, we take them to a pond to live out the rest of their lives in uh, solitude, hopefully. Yeah, and come back, many of them, every year. We've got some really big, when you come out, you'll see these wonderful sturgeon and muskies. Some of them are 30, 40 pounds that have been back here for, I know, like 20 years. So it's pretty yeah. cool to be able to see these same fish and how much they've grown every year. Uh, speaking of the pond, it's uh, cold water. Uh, it is groundwater. People ask, you know, what temperature it is? It's about 50 degrees. It's actually pumped right out of the groundwater, which is really good for the fish. That cooler water um, holds more oxygen, so yep. fish breathe oxygen with their gills, and then it also slows down their metabolism. They do need to eat. They don't eat fish curds or sweet. <laughs> they don't eat cheese curds, but they do eat fish. There's a lot of minnows in the pond. It's a state fair, so you got to eat while you're at the state fair, yeah. right? So the uh, fish are out here. Chilling on some minnows when they get hungry. So Yeah, if you want to see some fish feeding, you probably want to come at sun, sunset or sunrise. It's probably the best times. Yeah. But the cold water is really conducive to some of our cold water species uh, who like it chilly. And they're more it's, active. So what do we got here for the cold water? It's really water? cool when you come here during the day, even on a hot day because the water's so cold. Our cold water species, especially trout in Minnesota, really are pretty active in the cold water. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of fun to see them dart around. We have four species of trout in Minnesota, and only two of them are native. The brookie and the lake trout are both native to Minnesota. The brown trout and the rainbow trout were brought here hundreds of years ago as a way to increase the population and sport fishing opportunities. So, And they're really good tasting fish. And they're th great. And as you say, they steal the show. The rainbows will be jumping in and stuff like yeah. that. So if you see a fish jumping or actually grabbing a minnow during the middle of the day, it's probably a rainbow trout. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I think Minnesota is probably one of the most underrated trout fisheries between the East Coast and the Rocky Mountains in the nation. Nobody really knows about it. We have 3,800 miles of trout stream in Minnesota. So it's a great opportunity to come here and buy your trout stamp and get out fishing. Yeah, check out our website, mndnr.gov. It's a great resource for fishing, especially for trout and all the other species. We've got a lot of good tips and suggestions. One of the big questions we get here at State Fair is some of these big fish. They're um, kind of the stars of the show. As I mentioned earlier, we have probably a 40 pound sturgeon in here. We have two species of sturgeon in Minnesota, the lake sturgeon and the shovel nose sturgeon. Uh, the lake sturgeon is a really interesting fish. It's been, uh, was hundreds of millions of years old. It's probably some of the ancestors swam with the dolph with the dinosaurs. Uh, and uh, But they haven't really changed much. They're kind of an ancient looking fish. but. We've instituted a catch and release program for these really big fish to try and protect them. 
Um, and you can find them in our big rivers and some of our big lakes. But um, if you want to get a new state record, Benji, I'd encourage you to head out, check out, try to get a sturgeon. Uh, the current record is 78 inches, but every year as we've been catching and, and sampling and testing for these fish, they keep getting bigger and bigger. So we know eventually I think we're going to have over 100 pound fish caught in Minnesota. So that would be a good, it, good record to go for. It wouldn't surprise me. One of the other really cool ancient fishes that we talk about is the paddle nose. And it's something we don't get to see. The, the paddle fish in Minnesota, we don't really see a whole lot because you don't catch them. They have a big, long shovel nose on them, and they, they're filter feeders. So they like to pick their nose up and scoop up plankton and stuff in the water. So down south and some of the other states, you can... Um, you can snag them, Snag right? them. Yeah. yes. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. Not legal in Minnesota. But it's not legal in Minnesota, no. so we don't see them here, but we got them at the state fair, so it's a really cool fish to come and see. Yeah, they've been kind of over-harvested also, as sturgeon were for a long time, but they're starting to make a comeback in some of our rivers. But, um, yeah, they're really cool, You're really easy to be able to pick them out when you come out to the fair. Another fish that you're going to see if you pay attention in the shallows or in the side where we are down here in the shade, uh, in the daylight during the, the fair it gets really hot, and there's a couple of fish in here that really hate the bright sun. Uh, and this is, I'm talking mostly about catfish. They have really small eyes. They actually do a lot of their sensing and finding their food with their skin. We call them a swimming tongue. They've got thousands of, of uh, taste buds all over their whole body. Um, they have these whiskers that are actually called barbels, but um, they, that helps find their food too. But they, if you want to see those, come down by the shade under the tree here, and you'll see uh, all the catfish. They usually gather there. Yeah, and they're one of the few fish that don't have scales. They have like a leathery skin that's full of, full of taste buds. And you want to mention the gar? We, that's another really ancient that, fish. That that's one have. of my favorite ones too. The long nose and the short nose gar are two of the gar we have in Minnesota. And you can tell by their, they almost look like a miniature um, crocodile or alligator. They have a long nose, really colorful and spotty fish. So Big scales. Big scales. Yeah. I think another one of our old fish that just did some research on was the um, big mouth buffalo. Which is really cool. It's they they a found long that time. they were 112 years old, wasn't? It? Yeah, a study in West Central Minnesota, they found some of that lived for, for ages. Uh, another really big fish in the pond that we have um, coming back year after year, a couple of them that are, again like over 30 pounds is the muskies. So that's in the Esox Northern the pike family. Um, we've got two species, the northern and the muscalunge. Um, one of the easiest way to tell the difference in the pond here is that the northerns have darker skin with white spots, usually kind of kidney bean shaped, and muskies are the reverse of that. They have uh, dark, light, skin. Uh, light skin with dark spots. So that's kind of the quickest way to tell the difference when you're looking at them when you're here at the pond. Yeah, and there are some of the big fish that are swimming around too. They're, they're pretty noticeable. Yeah, well, and of course we have to mention our state fish. Everybody knows that, right? It's the walleye. walleye. Yeah, uh, the walleye is uh, really popular, really great tasting. Also very light sensitive. The opposite of catfish, they have really big eyes, which makes them sensitive to the light. So they will also be here in the shade under the tree. So check them out there. And then um, we should talk a little bit about just the fishing opportunities and learn to fish. Again, I mentioned our website earlier, but we have all this great learn to fish information. But if you want to go fishing in the Twin Cities area, Benji, what, what should they think about? We have look, a great program it? called Fishing in the Na Neighborhood, a fin, we call it our fin program. But the seven county metro area, we specifically manage lakes for uh, youth fishing. So getting kids out, they all have piers, they usually have a playground nearby, mm -hmm. restrooms, other facilities. You can get out there, they're stocked with a lot of panfish. Panfish are a great introduction species. Actually, the bluegill and sunfish family are the most caught fish in Minnesota. So it's yeah. a great way to get out with just a, a bobber, a lead-free sinker, and a small hook and catch some fish and have a lot of fun on a Yeah, my first weekend. kids caught their first, my two kid, daughters caught their first fish when they were two years old at one of the fin ponds in the cities. Yeah. You're never more than five miles, I think it is, from any fin pond in the Twin Cities area. So and there's quite a few of them. Lots of great it's, opportunities. It's a great resource. Again, it's on our website. Look that up. Find a pond near you. I think that covers a lot of fish. We, we haven't really talked about rough fish. They're really cool. Yep. I don't know if you want to list off some of the species that we have. Uh, we, have we have a lot of carp in here, some coolbacks in here. The buffalo, we had mentioned the big mouth buffalo is one of the ancient fish that's we just kind of discovered was 112 years old. Yeah. Um, they sucker have a, family. There's a lot of different yep. suckers, right? Red, red, red horse. horse. Yep. Fall in there. Yep. So there are a lot of species, and it's very cool. I think, you know, one of the 
Um, U.S. Park Service Rangers told me once that when they did a survey of the Mississippi River back in the 30s, they caught hardly any fish. And now in Minnesota, we have over 162 species of fish. So the DNR and everybody out there in the public is doing a lot of great work to keep our waters clean and do some good things to help improve our fisheries. And it's really showing. I think we have a great fisheries in Minnesota. So Yeah, and we have, I think, mentioned 40 species or so in the pond this year. Uh, if you go back over uh, inside the fish, uh, sorry, inside the DNR building, you'll see that actually we have some tanks of a lot of different fish too. Um, we mentioned talking about buying a license. Make sure you get it to the other side of the, or just inside the building. You can actually buy your license while you're here yep. at the fair today. Uh, and then, of course, you have lots of questions. You can go to the information booth on the other side yeah. of the building. And, uh, and you can pick up a, fi a fish, Fishes of Minnesota poster. Yeah, we got Fishes of Minnesota posters. They're great for the kids. And I think one of the really cool things for all the grandparents coming out here with your grandkids, uh, lifetime licenses for the kids. It's a great Christmas present. You always have a fishing partner then too, so. Yeah, I think we'll wrap it up. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. I just want to mention uh, stewardship is a really c critical component of what we do at the DNR, making sure we take care of our fisheries. And that includes the help of all of you and the work that you do to help protect our water quality. So making sure we're careful about what we do on shorelands, uh, protect our aquatic plants, uh, make sure that we're not moving invasives around, invasives around being careful to protect uh, our water quality and, through that. And so. disposing of your bait properly, right? Yeah. So. So thanks everybody, go to take someone fishing, buy that license, and uh, we'll see you at the fair. Have a good one.